past 18 months that we've been working remotely and trying really hard to avoid COVID, there have been a couple of stories that have kept coming back time and time again on the channel. Stories like automakers delaying the launch of new vehicles or pushing back delivery dates as the ongoing chip shortage bites. Stories like Tesla pushing out new autopilot full self-driving beta updates and also pushing up its vehicle prices. And that's not to mention stories about one startup or another joining the stock market through a reverse merger with a SPAC. And of course, the continuing fallout to the Hindenburg reports on both Nikola Motor and Lordstown Motors. But perhaps one of the most pressing and disturbing stories has been the ongoing saga of battery fires and recalls involving cars that use LG Energy supplied battery packs. At the forefront of LG Energy battery woes has been Hyundai and General Motors, both of whom have been forced to engage in recall campaigns after a small percentage of Hyundai Kona EVs and Chevrolet Bolt EVs around the world caught fire. I am not going to go into the now pretty long and pretty convoluted story behind both sets of vehicle fires, nor am I going to go in depth to explain the failed attempts that both automakers initially made to rectify the problem. If you are interested in the backstory, you can check out this playlist that we've made to help you delve deeper into what started it all. The too long didn't read though, is that while GM and Hyundai both thought that they could rectify the bursting into flame thing with software updates, they couldn't. And while Hyundai decided to work with LG Energy to carry out a worldwide battery recall and replacement campaign to ensure that every affected Kona EV was given a brand new, known to be good, non-defective battery pack, it only made that decision after discovering a manufacturing defect in its production line that meant that all Kona EV battery packs were potentially dangerous and in need of replacement. GM, meanwhile, decided to issue a recall campaign that initially was going to replace certain modules, modules which it said it had detected the simultaneous presence of two rare manufacturing defects in the same battery cells that it now believes was the root cause of the fire. As I understood it at the time, the recall would have involved GM service centres dropping the battery pack on all Bolt EVs, affected by the original recall campaign that is, and then examining the modules inside each battery pack. If defective modules were detected, GM would then instruct dealerships to replace faulty modules with new ones. This would have theoretically left some Bolt EVs with a mix of new modules and old modules, others with an all-new module set up, and others with an old battery pack untouched. But yesterday, there was a significant change to GM's plans. As first reported by Sean Graham writing for Electrek, Sean is a Bolt EV owner and founder of the Chevrolet Bolt EV and Bolt EUV owners group on Facebook, GM is now reaching out to select Bolt EV owners to arrange for their cars to have all of their battery modules replaced under warranty. Moreover, those who have had their car's battery modules replaced will get the newest battery cells in their cars, the very same ones made in the US for the 2022 Chevrolet Bolt EV and 2022 Chevrolet Bolt EUV. So today, I'm going to go over what we know about this change of direction, try to answer some of the questions you might have, and give you some of the responses to questions that we sent to GM's press team when we heard about this all happening. GM has confirmed via email to us and other news outlets that 2017 through 2019 Bolt EVs will be involved in the recall campaign. Those are the same Bolt EVs that were in the original two, ultimately unsuccessful, recalls. According to Sean, who cites his own contacts at GM, the recall campaign is first going to prioritise a subset of affected Bolt EVs. While GM did not specify exact years or production timeframes to either him or us here at the channel, he and many of us in the media expect that subset to be cars made in late 2018. That's because of all of the dozen or so affected cars which have caught fires to date, the majority were early 2019 model year cars. Some of the very last Chevrolet Bolt EVs made with battery packs sourced from LG Energy's Oshan facility in South Korea. 
Cars made after that point, the switch occurred sometime in mid-2019, used battery packs made at a brand new jointly owned LG Energy GM production facility in the US, a facility which, so far, has not been documented as having produced any battery cells associated with Bolt EV battery fires. In response to a series of questions we sent to GM, the company has confirmed that there's currently no timeline to know how long the entire replacement program will take, or indeed how long Bolt EV owners will have to leave their cars at dealerships for the swap to take place. Given that there is currently extremely high demand for lithium ion battery cells globally, and the fact that GM's US production facility is currently producing new cells for its new EVs, and there's a microprocessor shortage, the time frame could range from months to years. I mean, it's certainly taking Hyundai a long time to execute its own battery swap program, so be prepared for a wait. While GM did not confirm any priority to us over which model years will go first, Sean confirmed to me that in addition to prioritizing Bolt EVs with battery packs made from a certain time point, GM is also looking to prioritize cars which are regularly discharged to a low state of charge. It will confirm this via examining OnStar telematics for every Bolt EV. This might seem like an unfair move, but it makes sense since, as several of the most recent Bolt EV fires have proven, these fires are occurring in Bolt EVs that have been regularly deeply discharged. That, by the way, is one of the reasons why GM is asking owners of affected vehicles not to discharge their vehicles below an indicated 70 miles, 112 kilometers of remaining range, and not to charge their cars beyond 90% state of charge. So why this change of plan? It's rumored right now that GM hasn't yet figured out a way to detect the faulty modules within Bolt EV battery packs without physically tearing them apart and examining things at the cell level to identify issues. By which point, obviously, you will have destroyed the cells and made them very dead. So battery module replacements and this battery replacement program is now being put into effect. I, like many others though, suspect it's going to take a long time to execute. Which brings me to some of the things that I personally don't think make sense about this all. Unlike Hyundai, which just opted to replace faulty battery packs with brand new ones, casing it all, GM's approach is to drop the pack from affected cars, break them open, and then completely disassemble the pack to replace the faulty modules with known good ones. That process is intensive, and it's going to take a lot of time. And if you want to know just how much time it takes, check out this excellent video from the Weber Auto YouTube channel in which Professor John Kelly takes a Bolt battery pack apart to reduce it to its constituent parts. Taking everything apart requires removing the physical lid of the external battery case, draining a whole lot of coolant, and then individually unbolting the five high voltage battery modules that the Bolt EV has within its battery pack. And yes, personal frustration here as an owner of not one but two Bolt EVs, I am a little salty about the way this is all being handled, at least since it became apparent the original Final Fix software update didn't actually fix the issue. It seems GM is taking the most convoluted approach it can, but I am not a production specialist, and while I'm sure there is a good reason for this approach rather than just replacing the battery packs, case and all, in their entirety, I'm not sure if this reason is good for GM's customers or indeed for GM's reputation, since frankly, GM's focus right now should be expediting a functional solution, whatever that happens to be. Then again, while I think this approach is more time intensive for dealerships, you could argue this method ensures that there's less waste overall, since you're reusing the original battery casing and some of the other parts, just replacing the modules rather than making entire new battery pack casings. Luckily though, there is some good news from all of this, namely for those who do get a full battery module replacement for their car's battery pack. And remember, that is now apparently what seems likely to happen to every affected car unless GM can figure out a way to detect faulty modules. They will get 
a brand new 100,000 mile eight year battery warranty to go with that refreshed battery pack. Those new battery modules also won't be the old modules that had a total battery capacity of 60 kilowatt hours. They will be brand new battery modules, the same ones found in the new 2022 Bolt EV and Bolt EUV. These battery modules are slightly different in their cell chemistry to the original 2017 through 2019 Bolt EV battery cells. They have a lower internal cell resistance and higher energy density and will give a total battery pack capacity of 66 kilowatt hours total. This should mean you'll get more range per charge. And of course, more importantly, they are produced on a different production line, a line that hasn't been producing faulty fire liking battery packs. Of course, this is certainly a nice welcome upgrade for any Bolt EV owner currently caught up in the recall. But what about those Bolt EV owners currently seeking an MSRP swap or a buyback? Well, right now, GM has told us via email that it will continue to consider buybacks on a case by case basis. And disclaimer, that's what we are currently pursuing with our two Bolt EVs. Right now, myself and my wife have submitted our paperwork to GM. And after eight days of chasing GM, I've just learned that the original paperwork never actually arrived. So we had to resubmit it yesterday. Winter, meanwhile, having rejected a buyback offer when the original final fix was announced, has similarly begun his buyback process again, since the original final fix didn't actually fix the problem. And right now, because GM is telling customers they can't park indoors or charge indoors prior to the battery pack being swapped out, he's got a Chevrolet Bolt EV he can't charge at his apartment complex, and luckily his apartment complex are being very generous and gracious and letting him use a parking space he shouldn't need because he's already renting two garages, one for each EV he owns. Which leaves us where? Well, if you've yet to start a buyback process, news that you will likely get a brand new battery pack or at least new modules for your battery pack that will be the equivalent of a brand new pack is great. The news that GM has yet to determine how long this will take or when you can expect to be contacted about the program, well, that's cold comfort when you've got to live with the fact that until your car is called in for repair, you're going to be stuck charging outside, parking outside, and using what amounts to about 60% of your car's original battery capacity. That is not so good. GM says it will contact owners starting August 23rd, so I guess we'll hear more then but sadly, I don't know what the recall campaign will be for those outside of North America. Sorry. As for me, well, I started the buyback process for both our bolts when GM announced it would be replacing some modules, but not all. And when the original software fixes didn't actually solve the issue of bolts catching fire. Two more Bolt EV fires occurred on July 25th that we're still not even getting a whole lot of data on. My original hope was that GM would replace affected battery packs. And honestly, if GM had announced that from the get go, I would not currently be halfway through a buyback request. I love driving both our Bolt EVs and save for this very messy recall, they have been really super reliable with only two strange ABS failures on my car, one after a previous software update, which mysteriously vanished, and one after my daughter stole and then joy rode my car at breakneck speed without my permission through the local town. Yeah, that's a long story. Right now, I'm not sure I want to endure not being able to fully use my car's battery pack. We've got a couple of road trips planned for TE, one of which requires us to bring a trailer along to pick something up in Central California. We are planning to continue the buyback and MSRP swap process as we're already halfway through it and then see what happens. If GM offers a slot to replace both our car's battery packs sooner rather than later, we might just stick with that. But if the MSRP swap or buyback is faster, well, after waiting a full year, we may just go that route as right now, both bolts are our only transportation and we happen to live in the country. Are you in the same boat? What's your goal? And what do you expect to happen next? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. That's it for today. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and our other two channels, Transport Evolved Take Two and Transport Evolved Shorts. 
I know that a fair few of you are already subscribed to all three, but many of our viewers aren't. So please do subscribe, hit that bell and help us out. Let us know what you thought of the video below. And if you're not someone who likes the YouTube comment section, then just take it over to our American EV section of our Discord server. It is totally free to join and we will leave the link below. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreons, with special thanks to our $50 a month Patreons, David Janakula, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahoa, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Paul Conway, Sean Ueda, Gordon C, Ray Jean Fellows, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Laura Sanborn, Rory Litwin and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Ellery, Hensley and Ian. If you'd like to join the ranks of our wonderful supporters, you'll find links below to Patreon, Bitcoin and Kofi. And of course, you can buy your very own TE swag at our Redbubble store. Like the t-shirt that no one, for some reason, wants to buy right now. I wonder why. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving. <laughs>